Over the last two years, I've been working at getting great photos of the Milky Way. I decided to finally put together all of my tips that I've learned along the way that I feel like would have helped me progress faster. This video is part one in a series on Milky Way photography that I'm putting together about all of the things I've learned over the last two years. Hello everybody, I'm Will Cheney. In this first video, my main goal is to get you out on location and get you to get your first Milky Way photo. Stick around until the end to get my go-to settings to get you started in the field. Alright, so first off, I think it's very important to just go out there and get your first shot. In this video, I'm not trying to go through and inundate you with a lot of knowledge, a lot of different settings, a lot of different information about the equipment. I want you to be able to run out into the field and get your first image of the Milky Way. I think that's important because that first time that you go out and you see the Milky Way show up on the LCD on the back of your camera, it's a really awesome feeling. And it, for me at least, it drove me to want to dive even deeper into Milky Way photography. And I also believe you've got to start somewhere. So if you're just sitting at home, you could be out taking a photo of the Milky Way instead. And that's just kind of the way that I view it. If you're not practicing, you're not going to get better. You've got to start somewhere and I'm going to help get you there. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to have to find the location that you want to shoot at. Now this part is probably going to be a little bit of the harder part because depending on where you live, it may be hard to find a dark enough sky. But in all honesty, if you can get just a little bit of darkness out of your skies, and depending on the time of the year, you're going to catch some glimpse of the Milky Way if you point your camera in that direction and you use the settings that I go over at the end of this video. So the first thing I want you to do is go over to darksightfinder.com. So once you're at darksightfinder.com, what I want you to do is go to your location and try to find the nearest spot where the color gradient on the map is at least yellow. I typically try to shoot it at least a blue, and then I like to also, if I'm shooting in that blue, to be pointed towards a darker area. Let's say, for instance, you're in the yellow and you're pointed towards the white, you're just looking straight into the light pollution. So if you can look towards a darker sky, you're going to help yourself out because you're not going to have as much light pollution sitting on the horizon of your photo. So after you've done that, and you've got a location in hand, I want you to go to your cell phone or your tablet and go download PhotoPills. So PhotoPills actually has a pretty awesome interface where you can go into a GPS location and put in the time and the date that you want to shoot. And you can play around by sliding back and forth on the time at the bottom. And you can see how the Milky Way is actually going to move over you as well. So you might go out, let's say right now, like I'm shooting this video in December, you're not going to get that great shot of the Milky Way core right now. It's just not possible, whether you're in the northern or the southern hemisphere. So if you're wanting that shot, what I recommend is stick around till at least March, and you're going to want to get up early and go shoot in the morning. As the spring and the summer progress, you're going to be able to shoot the Milky Way earlier and earlier into the night. But I think if you're watching this video in December, January, February right now, go out and get that shot of the Milky Way. It's still visible. It's not going to be the core, but you're going to get good practice in so that when the core does come out in a couple of months, you're ready to go. So now that you have your location and you have an idea of where the Milky Way is going to be situated in the sky, next thing you're going to want to do before you go out and shoot the Milky Way is you're going to want to check the weather forecast for that area. If you're in North America or the United States, I highly recommend going to noaa.gov. And from there, you're going to type in the nearest city and then you can actually go in and look at the forecast on this chart and see how the clouds are predicted to be during the times that you want to go out and shoot. So assuming at this point you found your location, you know the weather's good, the last thing you want to check in this field is check the phase of the moon. That's also going to play a role in your photo. It doesn't necessarily matter the phase of the moon, you just want to make sure it's not up in the sky at the time that you go out and shoot. So, Obviously a full moon, you don't want to go out and shoot around that time. There's going to be a ton of light coming off of it. But as you get a few days in front of that full moon or a few days after, you start to open up a window on either side of the moon rising or setting that you can go out and shoot in those dark times. Pay attention to the times that it rises and it sets in the photo pill app and you'll be able to get a little bit better photo on your first try. I'm making an assumption that if you're watching this video that you have a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. The next thing you're going to want to use for getting your first shot is the widest angle lens that you have. Whether that's a 14, a 20, a 24, an 18, a 30, a 35, I want you to go out and shoot with that lens. And along with that wide angle lens, I want you to also make sure that if you have two lenses within that same range, get the one that has the lowest aperture. That way you can bring in more light to your sensor for the same amount of exposure time. The next item is pretty much a necessity. You're going to need a tripod or something sturdy to set your camera on because once you start to expose your image, you cannot let your camera move. 
All right, so next let's just get your camera set up for taking your photo. So the first thing that I want is I want you to be shooting in RAW. And the reason I want you to shoot in RAW is because after you get home, you're gonna wanna make some adjustments to the photo. You have the most data available for making changes to your image. The second thing I want you to do, and some people may disagree with me on this, and that's okay, I want you to turn on the long exposure noise reduction. Now the reason I want you to do that is because it's your first couple of images out and I just want you to have the cleanest image possible whenever you get back home. This next step is going to be the hardest thing you do. At this point, I'm going to make the assumption that you're out in the field and you're ready to start shooting. So you've got your lens on and your camera mounted on the tripod and you're trying to get your stars in focus. This can be the hardest thing to do. The easiest way I find to do this is to go into a live view mode on the back of your LCD screen on your camera. What I want you to do is find the brightest object in the sky. At this point, using the plus or minus magnifier glass on the back of your camera, I want you to start zooming in on that particular object. Once you get zoomed in all the way on it, switch your camera into manual focus mode and begin turning towards infinity focus. What you'll notice is that object's gonna go from bigger and then it's gonna get smaller. Once you're in the correct focus, you'll know this because the star's gonna be as small as it can. And what you might find is if you go too far, the star will start getting bigger again. So you wanna just find that sweet spot where the star is as small as it can be on the back of your LCD. Once you've done this, you're in focus. So there's only a couple of things you have to do now to get started shooting. So the first setting that I want you to go in and change for this particular image is I want you to set your ISO to 6400. The second thing I want you to change is your white balance. If your camera has the ability to go in and change on a Kelvin scale, I suggest shooting it at 3600. If it doesn't have that, try shooting in a fluorescent mode. The next thing I want you to do is set your aperture to be the maximum aperture of your lens. Whether that's f4, f2.8, f1.2, whatever maximum your lens has, shoot at that. And finally, I want you to dial in your exposure. Now this gets a little tricky depending on what you're shooting with. If you're shooting with a crop sensor, I want you to take the number 300 and divide it by the focal length of your lens. So if you're shooting with a crop sensor camera and you've got a 20 millimeter focal length, I want you to take the number 300, divide it by 20, and you're gonna find that your exposure time should be about 15 seconds. It's gonna get you a great shot without not a lot of star trailing. But let's say that you're shooting with a full frame camera, I want you to take the number 500 and divide it by that 20 millimeter lens if that's the focal length that you're using. At that point, you can shoot for up to 25 seconds without star trailing. And again, that number is not tried and true. You're likely still going to get a little bit of star trailing, but it's going to get you a start. If you don't like the image that you take, bump that exposure down by a few seconds. So at that point, you're ready to take your first photo. So go ahead, you'll want to hit the shutter release. So once you've taken that first shot and you've enjoyed seeing it on the back of your camera, I want you to also try taking one at ISO 3200. The reason I say that is because I really want you, the viewer, to have a chance at a great shot. Not all cameras can handle shooting as high as 6400. I personally shoot with an Icon Z6 and I almost always shoot at 6400 for astrophotography. But I know that on my older Nikon D3200, 6400 just doesn't look great and I tend to shoot more at 3200 so I don't get as much noise. So anyways, that's gonna give you two shots when you go back home and you can look, pull them up on the computer and you can just enjoy them. I'm not gonna go through editing on this video because like I said, the whole point of this video is just to get you out in the field, give you the tools that you need it, and give you some settings so that you could go out and take your first couple of Milky Way shots. And I'll save editing for another video. So that's it everybody. I really hope this video helps you out and I'd love to hear down in the comments what your thoughts are and if this helped you get your first Milky Way photo that maybe you've always wanted. I hope to over the next couple of weeks to be putting out a video every Thursday or Friday and go into every aspect out of this video in more detail so that you can start to get a better understanding of why I gave you these settings to go out and shoot with and also just different aspects about the equipment that you're using and how the stars work and how the moon works and how it all comes together so that you can start getting great Milky Way and astrophotography photos. So if you haven't yet already, please subscribe so that you don't miss the latest video and also be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this. Thanks everybody for taking the time to watch this and please let me know down in the comments how your first Milky Way photo session went. See you guys.